Blog Talk Radio. Hello everyone, this is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio and it is Friday morning, 5.30 in the morning here in Calgary, Alberta, February 26th and I'm happy to be here and I'm always happy to be here and um, I'm glad you can tune in and listen and um, you know, this is a um, 15 minute chat, one child abuse survivor to another. We're actually looking at um, at the uh, Understanding Child Maltreatment and Juvenile Delinquency Foundations for Effective Responses um, article that I found on the web at www.cw la.org. This is written by Janet Wig, uh, W-I-I-G, and J-D and M-S-W. And this is a really interesting article. Um, you know, it sort of it just ties in, you know, the issue between child maltreatment and neglect and uh, child abuse and uh, the issue of juvenile delinquency, which I think is really important. You know, a lot of times people, um, you know, you, you hear about these cases where uh, children and youth are, are out there doing these things, uh, you know, criminal activities and whatnot. Um, and some of them are pretty minor, and then, you know, some escalate to be, you know, pretty bad and, and serious crimes. And then people think, you know, oh, look at those terrible kids. And, and they, you know, some of them, and, and not all of them, but some of those kids are out there doing that stuff, you know, because of uh, the issue surrounding the fact that they grew up in an abusive home or. Uh, just suffered through a lot of neglect and, uh, you know, or actually were were kind of shown how to do that by their caregivers or, or parents. So I just think it's important to look at it. They, the other article that we were looking at was part one, and that was Understanding Child Maltreatment and Juvenile Delinquency, the research written by Kathy spatz Widom, PhD. We looked at that earlier this week and last week, and that was on the same website, www.cwla.org, and they were saying, you know, about 21% um, uh, when the study was, was done, 21%. Of children um, who were you know, maltreated or abused were likely to go on and commit a serious crime, uh, a violent crime, um, as compared to other study groups where there was no abuse in the home. So you know there is a there's a, a, a jump, and those figures were old, so I don't know what the actual uh, stats would be today. So that's what we're looking at, and um, yeah, it's quite interesting. I'm glad that you can join me. Uh, this is, um, you know, it's not a professional show. I don't hold any professional counseling certificates or anything like that. I'm, I'm not a professional therapist or counselor, and this show is not meant to pr- to replace professional help. Uh, I'm just a person who pays my own money out to do this show because I think that all of our voices are needed. You know, if we're going to ever see any change in this world. We're going to all have to get involved in no matter what we choose to get involved in. I just think, you know, there's so many areas that need, uh, you know, really need work. And it's going to take all of us really to get the job done. So, you know, I'm just uh, one more voice to add to all the other voices that are already out there and have been out there for years. And I just thought, why am I just sitting on the couch? You know, I should be, if I care about this world that I'm living in and I really want to see some change and, and see some positive change uh, instead of just sitting around complaining and griping about it and saying, oh, this is terrible, then how am I going to do this? And how, you know, it sort of came to me. I thought, you know, if I don't like what I see, then I need to be part of the change. <clears throat> so that's what I thought. You know, I just, uh, you know, start out on this journey of, of getting involved and, um, just doing what I can in whatever way that I can and just being a voice for those who have no voice and standing up for people who can't stand up for themselves, especially regarding child abuse issues and human rights abuses, right? So it's so important. That's my passion, and I just think that uh, this world could be a real... Uh, we could do better. People could do better. But it starts with our own hearts. It starts in our own families. It starts in our own cities and communities and towns. It starts in our own countries. It's you know has to start with us, with me and you. And so if, if it doesn't start with me and you, it'll never happen. And so that's why I'm saying, it, you know, I'm just one more voice, you know, out there just to say, add my voice to everyone else's and just say, you know, we need to really make some positive change for the children today and for the children tomorrow and, and the, you know, the, on, the, the, the coming generations, right? This is so important. And, and I thought, you know, whatever way we can help is the way that we should help. It's not like uh, one person's... Uh, advocacy work is better than another i think it's just a matter of of if everyone pitches in it's bound to make a change and so that's why i'm doing this show and um uh you know doing whatever i can to 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 sort of make a difference in in this world right so it's great and i'm happy to see you know anyone who's actually standing up for a child and standing up against abuse and um and 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 there's other great important 
uh, you know, causes out there. They're all just as important uh, to me. And so, you know, whatever we're doing to try to help this make this world a better place, that's just great. So I'm glad you joined me. And, you know, um, listen at your own discretion. I carry all, I, I actually cover almost all abuse topics, just about everything uh, regarding abuse, uh, child abuse, domestic violence, and whatnot. And I ask that everyone listen at their own discretion. And uh, if you're uh, under the age of 18, that you would have someone listen to the show with you just to make sure it's something you should be listening to. Um, I really believe in online safety for children and for youth. And uh, I, I hope that everyone has a parent out there who cares enough to what you're listening to. Uh, mine didn't. So, um, you know, it, it can happen. And I just, you know, that's my hope is that you would have someone in your life that would care about what you're listening to. And they could tune into the show. And then, you, you know, if you had questions, they could... They could help you uh, find the answers to the questions and and just uh, sort of be a support for you, right? Which that's what I hope for. I wish that for everybody, right? We all know that's not the case. So, you know, if you have a teacher, a counselor, or someone that you trust, you know, that you know is trustworthy and, and uh, you can sit down with them and listen to the show, then that'd be great. I'd appreciate it. So, yeah, we'll get right on with this article. Yesterday we were just looking at a piece that was, they were sort of going over some risk factors that kind of, you know, um, are sort of involved in the whole issue between child abuse and neglect and uh, delinquency, and that was family, school, community, neighborhood, and peer-related, and uh, or an individual. So individual would be like early onset of delinquency, discipline problems, family, uh, child child maltreatment, parental substance abuse, family disruption, parental criminality can kind of contribute to juvenile delinquency, school, poor academic performance, truancy, school transitions, things like that. Uh, community neighborhood uh, poverty, community disorganization, and exposure to violence that can contribute as well to juvenile delinquency. This is the article written by uh, Janet Wig. And uh, peer related delinquent uh, siblings and peers, rejection by peers. So those are just some, some of the uh, you know, risk factors right, involved. And, and they did say you know, the, best, the best thing that would help prevent tomorrow's delinquents would be prevention of, of child abuse and neglect itself, you know, and then getting these communities and neighborhoods or, you know, organized with programs for, for young people, right, just to help them, um, you know, so that they don't end up doing, uh, getting involved in criminal activities and, and stuff like that and getting involved in drugs or, or whatever they're doing. So I just think it's so important because, you know, they, you know, a lot of children and youth end up ruining their lives because of things like this and uh, it's sad, really. Prevention of child abuse and neglect. This is the next part of the article that we're going to look at today. Greater prevention of child abuse and neglect would help reduce delinquency. In its summary of prevention programs, Prevent Child Abuse America notes that an approach to prevention must respond to a range of needs. The summary recommends that there be a continuum of prevention programs starting with prenatal period and continuing through the school years. And um, it says these programs are categorized as A, support to, for new parents, B, education for parents, C, early and regular child and family screening and treatment, D, child care opportunities, E, programs for abused children, uh, F, life skills training for children and young adults, G, family support services, and H, public information and education. Like that is, you know, really what we need. And I don't know, I, it just doesn't seem like all that, there might be portions and parts of that going in, you know in our in North America in the schools and 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 uh in in certain cities and stuff but it's obviously not everywhere because otherwise a lot, a lot of the abuse that we're seeing right now would be caught people would be uh you know it would it would be uh noticed by someone who's actually you know involved in looking at in child protection and uh, you know it would be stopped early you know early screening right it's uh it's so important Whereas some prevention programs are targeted to the general population, primary prevention, and others to families in which abuse has already occurred, which is a tertiary prevention, many prevention programs are targeted to children and families known to be at higher risk of maltreatment, which is secondary prevention. And particular risk factors that have been associated with child maltreatment include parental substance abuse, childhood disability, and domestic violence. Prevention programs that address these risk factors include substance abuse treatment, respite care, and parent education programs. It says home visitation is a good example of a prevention program that has well-documented success in preventing child abuse and neglect, as well as producing other positive outcomes for the families and child's well-being. Although the U.S. Advisory Board on Child Abuse and Neglect in 1991 
recommended that home visitation be available universally to reduce a child mal maltreatment. Home visitation programs such as Hawaii's Healthy Start program are often targeted to families considered to be at higher risk. Um, an advantage of these programs is that, that home visitors who develop relationships with the parent not only provide a range of family support services, but also can model effective parenting. Uh, oh, that's, see, that's a great idea. <clears throat> One home visitation program targeted to low-income, at-risk pregnant women bearing their first child employs nurses to work with the women during their pregnancy and through the first two years of the child's life. And this pro the program is designed to help women improve their pregnancy outcomes, the care and development of the child, and women's own development, right? educational achievement, uh, participation, uh, participation in the workforce, and family planning. And this program reports significant improved outcomes for reduced child abuse and neglect, delinquency, and criminality. The program has been tested with both uh, white and African-American families, and the results show that the women and children who are visited by a nurse fared better in each of the outcome domains than the control group. And a 15-year follow-up study of primarily uh, uh, white families in contrast to those in a comparison group found that 79% fewer verified reports of child abuse and neglect, 56, oh yeah, 56 fewer arrests on the part of the 15-year-old children, 69% uh, fewer ma uh, maternal arrests, 44% fewer behavioral problems due to alcohol and drug abuse, and 60% fewer instances of running away on the part of the the 15-year-old children, and 56% per fewer days of alcohol consumption on the part of the 15-year-old children. So that's quite a significant amount. And uh, early intervention and prevention of delinquency, we'll look at that on Monday and uh, Monday morning, same time, we'll cover that. There's also intervention uh, in response to child abuse and neglect. And then we'll just continue on with that article. It's really, uh, it's, so, it's so interesting. Um, I, I find it very interesting myself because I'm in, yeah, I really, um, you know, my goal is, is child rights, you know, and, and, and especially child rights, but human rights because child rights are human rights. And um, so, you know, I'm, I'd like to help, I'd like to get involved in helping everyone, men, women, children. And so, but I, child rights sit very close to my heart. <coughs> Excuse me, and that's, you know, that's just because I grew up in an, an abusive home and I know what it's like and uh, I just think that it needs to stop. And so, yeah, that's all. I just, we need to stop it now. And it's it's unfortunate that, you know, it's just going to keep going on and, and continuing on. We're going to keep seeing these reports in the paper uh, and the news about children dying uh, as they're being murdered by their caregivers and parents and whatnot and other people and and also, um, you know, dying from abuse-related injuries, which is just horrible. And I just, you know, it's unfortunate that it has to come down to where we see it in the paper, but nobody wants to talk about it. It should be on the front page every day, some sort of a section talking about what's going on in the communities to prevent child abuse, what parents can do to get support, and uh, what, uh, you know, how to how to report abuse, what to look for, the signs and symptoms. Um, what prevent like programs in certain cities and stuff, but it should be on the front page, like not tucked away somewhere in the back, right? And uh, that's just my views on it. Now it's a depressing subject, but you know what? What's more depressing is these children are dying and suffering horrible abuse. And if they live through the abuse, they're going to suffer on it, uh, into adulthood with all kinds of problems, and it's going to cost the nations billions, like it is right now, absolutely billions and billions of dollars. Uh, when it really, it, it could have, as long, if someone is at least looking out for kids and reporting it, then that's what's important, right? If you suspect a child is being abused, even suspect it for a second, you have to report it. It's the right thing to do. You could save a child's life. And if it's not abuse, well, that's great because that just means that, you know, you cared enough to make the phone call. And uh, I, I know that's 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 me i i think everyone needs to take a look around especially if you if you work and, and live uh near children or you work with children so important not to turn a blind eye and you know you just think oh maybe i shouldn't get involved or maybe i shouldn't 
maybe the child's be better off in the home. Uh, there's too many kids dying, and, and, and it's just horrible. Well, thank you so much for joining me. The Canada Regional Director for Dream Catchers for Abused Children. Uh, I'm so happy to stand with them. Every day I say this, and every day I'll, I'll continue to say that. Um, check out the, the website, www.dreamcatchersforabusedchildren.com. Great resources on there. There's a free PDF download, Child Abuse Handbook. I got mine. It's great. Lots of information about signs, symptoms, uh, information uh, regarding um, how to report child abuse and uh, and the proper ways of doing that and, you know, it, it coping skill, like coping uh coping information to learn how to cope, you know, adult survivors and stuff to learn how to cope. So, yeah, please check out the website. Thank you so, so much for tuning in. I'll be back in 9.30 tonight. To, uh, ch- uh, child abuse prevention, human rights abuse prevention is up to us. And um, uh, I hope you can join me for that. Otherwise, have a great weekend, everybody. Take care. My heart is with you all. Bye-bye.